Okay. We're going to get um, a new version of Squeak. A version of the virtual machine called COG. I forget what COG stands for, but it's basically a just-in-time compiler, which means that rather than interpreting each line of code as it sees it, or each line of bytecode, it actually figures out the machine code and stores most used machine code so it can be used over and over again, which hopefully means that it can run much faster than the regular virtual machine that we've been using normally. So the place to find the COG VM is um, http www.miranda.org files slash COG slash VM. And you will see at the very bottom, the latest version right now is the 13th of December. So we will click on that and you will see a list of choices for the dot app is for Macintosh and then there's various others. There's for Linux, there's for Windows and so on. We're going to go with cog.app for the Macintosh and start that downloading. Fast. Okay. Now we're going to go to a different website http colon slash slash ftp.squeak.org slash drunk and get the latest and greatest version of everything else which is actually squeak 4.3 which is in the gamma version which means the last version hopefully before they officially release it so i'm impatient so we're getting the unofficial version Later on, you'll be able to get the official version. So we'll click on this, go back to our downloads page, and notice it's downloading reasonably fast. Aside from which file that you're downloading for the VM, all of these steps should be the same for all the major platforms. So here we are. We're looking at our cog.app for the Macintosh. And there's our cog application. And we unzip our gamma and drag the COG application into the Gamma folder. And there we have most of what we need. We are missing one item, the sources file. So I will have to go find that. Let's go to parent directory. Sources files. And we want the latest forces, sources file, which would be the 4.1 sources. Yes, the numbering is very confusing. Now we're downloading that. And now we have a compressed sources file. So we can uncompress it and drag it in here. And now we have all of our required files, not as this one click, all in one, standalone thing like we've been working with, but this is what the big boys use to start it. We can simply drag the image on top of the application. It'll say, do you want to open that? I say yes. And now, if all goes well, 
it opens a pristine image. Now it so happens I had already opened one and so we're going to show you what I need to do to install the um, OpenGL interface. First we're going to paste in this code, installer, repository, blah blah. Select it and do it. And there very rapidly it downloads this entire thing. Now we're going to select the next bit of code, installer, repository, croquet, GL. Select it and do it. I did do it, didn't I? Okay, it's waiting. There we go. And not quite as rapidly, it's selecting and downloading our Croquet GL code. It's taking far longer than I expected for whatever reason. Dum -de -dum -de -dum -de -dum. I expect that's because this particular website is very slow right now. When it says updating the website, it means updating from the website. Okay. Now. Before we do anything else, we changed things. We downloaded some code and installed it. So I'm going to save as new version. You've seen this before, but with the all-in-one, it doesn't work quite the same way. So save as new version. Images saved under COG cannot be opened on an interpreter again. Really save? Yes. Anyway, notice we now have a new version showing blah 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 point one point image. That means that when we want to start this image again we can go to the point one image instead of the original. And that means all our changes will have been saved. So what does this do? Well, in the OpenGL class there happens to be a bit of code called example. So we, I happen to know this already, so we Select it, do it, and boom, it puts up a little OpenGL thingy spinning many times a second, running at 370 frames per second. And when I click, it goes away. So now we have a library, I'll show you bits and pieces of it, that will allow us to interface with the 3D OpenGL routines. The main thing that we need to worry about is OpenGL class itself. And in our next lesson, we'll start working with it. If you've seen my OpenGL lessons before, you've seen this before, but now I'm going to go into great detail for the uh, Squeak from the Start series.